Muslim rituals are filled with paganism, like bowing to a pagan shrine, kissing a black stone, and even Quranic surahs that will turn into flocks of birds that will pray and intercede on your behalf. How and why did Muhammad create and retain these pagan practices? You know, many of you know that I am a former Muslim and a follower of Jesus, but of course, when I grew up as a Muslim, I, I was, I would consider myself uh, back then to be a very devout Muslim, did everything that uh, the Quran taught, the Prophet taught, all of the rituals, including, of course, daily prayers and uh, pilgrimage and all that kind of stuff. Now, back then, I did not think much about these rituals, but today I look back and there is idolatry written almost all over these rituals. And that led me to realize that the Prophet of Islam and Islam in general did not actually eradicate idolatry and the worship of idols. Rather, it seemed like Islam and the Prophet of Islam adapted some of these rituals, maybe put a spin on it, changed it slightly, Islamicized it if you wish, but it still has a pagan ritual to it. Bowing down daily towards a rock, touching a black stone, kissing a black stone, running between Safa and Marwa, two stones, stoning stone pillars, and the rest uh, and list can go on and on and on. So let us really examine then all of that and ask ourselves, where did Islam actually eliminate or eradicate any idol worship if in fact it's adapting to many of these rituals in the first place. With me here to unpack all of this, our dear brother, David Wood. David, welcome back. Yes, well, our good friend Muhammad, he was talking to a lot of pagans, and whenever the pagans really liked something, uh, Muhammad would either just keep it, like he would do with the Kaaba and with the black stone and with the, uh, you know, the Hajj rituals and so on. He would either just keep it and then come up with some story. So, oh yeah, we'll still continue, you know, uh, bowing down to the Kaaba, but uh, Abraham built it, and you just make up something like that. Uh, or, or he would replace the paganism, he would replace the pagan element with something that looks almost just like it, but is Islamic in nature. And Muhammad does this with, with morality as well. So someone can sleep with a bunch of women and Islam says, no, that's haram, but you can have you know, four wives and, and a bunch of slave girls and so on. So the same thing, you're doing the exact same thing, but now it's halal or hiring prostitutes. So there, there are men in the world who want to hire prostitutes and have sex with them. What does Muhammad do? He says, no, that's, that's forbidden, mm -hmm. but it's okay. You just marry them for the hour, right? It's called, called temporary marriage, muta, muta marriage. So he, he's, doing, he's giving them everything they want. He's just making it and giving them an Islam-friendly version of things. But we find this over and over and over again with just outright paganism, things that any Muslim on the planet would recognize and acknowledge as absolute indisputable paganism and then Muhammad will give them a replacement, a halal replacement to, to keep them happy. So, perfect example here. We've done videos before on the satanic verses. So the satanic verses, in case anyone's uh, watching this for, you know, didn't see any of the, our, our other verses on, I mean, our other videos on the satanic verses. Mm -hmm. The satanic verses is a very embarrassing incident in the life of Muhammad. But the short version is Muhammad wanted some sort of revelation from God that would help his fellow tribe, the Quraysh tribe, convert to Islam. He felt bad that his tribe was rejecting him. One day he got the revelation that he desired. He delivered, as part of the Quran, the words that Alat, Alusa, and Manat are the exalted cranes whose intercession is to be hoped for. He delivered that as the Quran. So just like he delivered the other verses of the Quran, he delivered a verse saying that Muslims could pray to three pagan goddesses, Alat, Alusa, and Manat. And they were called the exalted cranes. So the idea is mm -hmm. you still understand as a Muslim that Allah is the main God. He's the main God. But there are intercessors 
who are basically bird goddesses. They fly through the sky because Allah is way up there, right? Allah is way up there. Right. And so you can pray to Allah, but he's kind of far away. So you can pray to these pagan goddesses who are these intercessors and they'll carry your prayers up to Allah. And that's why it's okay. You're still acknowledging the authority of Allah, but you're also giving a role to these intercessors who are helping, helping your prayers along. So Muhammad delivered this revelation to his followers saying that they can now pray to pagan goddesses. Later on, he comes back and says, the devil made me do it. And he takes back those words. I don't know how anyone could have possibly continued believing in him after that. Uh, if he had somehow duped me into believing in him and I saw him, you know, after, after proclaiming monotheism, then all of a sudden he starts proclaiming polytheism. And then he goes back to monotheism. I would have been like, dude, I can't, I cannot take anything you're saying seriously right now. If you can't tell the difference between a revelation from God and a revelation from Satan, I am certainly not going to trust you with my eternity, right? Like I'm going to believe in you for, for my eternity. So notice, according to the story, the belief of the pagans about these goddesses was that they were intercessors. They, these, these, these pagan goddesses intercede for you. They intercede with Allah for you. Right. So that was very comforting to them. We've got these other goddesses and they can intercede uh, for us. Very comforting to the pagans. Now, What's Muhammad going to do? Is he going to say, hey, we need to, we need to end all this nonsense about uh, these things interceding and so on and these bird goddesses and all that. We need to get away from all of that. That's what you'd expect given what Muslims claim about Muhammad, but the reality is not quite so Islam friendly. So this is from Sahih Muslim, 1757. Allah's messenger said, recite the Quran. For on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. Notice the Quran is right. coming as an intercessor now. Exactly. Recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. Recite the two bright ones, Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran. So two chapters of the Quran. For on the day of resurrection, they will come as two clouds or two shades or two flocks of birds. Notice. Two flocks of birds in ranks pleading, pleading for those who recite them. Recite Surah al-Baqarah for to take recourse to it is a blessing and to give it up is a cause of grief and the magicians cannot confront it. The, ma the magicians cannot confront. Yeah. Notice, I mean, the Surah same worldview, the same philosophy is behind mm -hmm. why he's saying what he's saying. He's mm -hmm. speaking to people who can understand what that meant. And notice now it's it's not a lot Alus and Manat. Now it's the Quran. Yeah, now it's Surat al-Baqarah and Surat al-Imran. Yeah, chapter two, chapter three. Yeah, but they're entire flocks of birds. And so now it's not these three birds who are gonna intercede for you. Uh, the, the chapters of the Quran are even better. There are flocks of birds who are going to intercede for you and plead. And this is this is what this is what is so amazing about Islam is, as we've mentioned before, if Muslims were to see anyone in the world bowing down to a cube and running up and kissing a rock, right. they would immediately start accusing that, that group of paganism. Look at this pagan nonsense. That's what they would say. But it's exactly what they do. And they're doing the same thing the pagans did before them. But somehow when they do it, it's pure monotheism and pure worship of God. You take those same Muslims and say, hey, did you know the pagans, along with Muhammad and his original followers, uh, they believed that there are three pagan goddesses who can intercede for you. And these birds, these divine bird beings, will carry your prayers to Allah. What do you think about that? Any Muslim on the planet would say that is absolute pagan nonsense. Uh, b these birds taking your prayers up, these birds interceding for you, that's absolute pagan nonsense. But we read their own prophet saying, what does their prophet say? Chapters of the Quran are going to be these flocks of birds now right. who are interceding with Allah for you, interceding with Allah on your behalf. So Muhammad gives them exactly the same thing 
He just gives them an Islam-friendly version of it. That's right. So yes, your pagan goddesses, you can't believe in those pagan goddesses. What a bunch of pagan nonsense. Uh, but it's chapters of the Quran who are interceding for you as birds. And so and somehow you can lay this out to a Muslim and say, wait, the, 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 the bird goddess is interceding for you. Is, is that paganism? Yeah. Is that polytheism? Yeah. Is that a bunch of pagan nonsense? Yes. Completely absurd. Is that true worship of, of one God? No, under no circumstances. All right. What if instead of these bird goddesses, it's these bird chapters of the Quran, these flocks of bird chapters of the Quran, doing exactly the same thing and functioning in exactly the same way, interceding for you. Is that paganism? Nope. Pure worship of, of one true God. It's like <laughs> Muhammad could take anything. Because who said it? Muhammad, yeah, because right? Muhammad. He yeah. Can, he, Muhammad could take anything. You could take the, the any pagan practice you want in the world. Pick a pagan practice. Just say Muhammad did it. As, as, you, as you've pointed out before. I mean, Umar, Umar was talking to the Black Stone saying, I know you're just a rock. I know that you can't do anything, but I saw Muhammad. <laughs> I saw Muhammad kissing you, so I'm going to do it too. So they under, I mean, they can understand this is, this is pure paganism, but as long as they're taking Muhammad as their example, they just keep doing the exact same things that the pagans did. Yeah, but Umar probably was saying, okay, so I understand what it was done before I accepted Islam. Why am I still doing it today after I accepted Islam? Mm -hmm. In fact, you might, you wonder if he was thinking, isn't this idolatry? I mean, I was told that Islam is here to fight idolatry, to mm -hmm. destroy Id idols, you know, an idol worship and reform all of that. So why are we still doing, yeah, even if it rock. is one or two or three, let's say rituals that were left over, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's still idolatry. Definitely. Any way you look at it, it is still idolatry. If it looks like a rock, if it feels like a rock, if it touches, you know, basically and smells like a rock, it is a rock. That's why Islam rocks big time. That's why I left Islam because it's a fake rock and I follow the real rock of my foundation of faith. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, wait now and see what else we can discover in the future uh, about other things that Muhammad has done and share with you from the Islamic sources so that you are fully aware of the fact that there is nothing new about Islam. There is nothing unique about Islam. There is nothing uh, uh, distinguishable about Islam when you compare its rituals to idol worship. My Muslim friends, I hope that you go and examine all of these sources that we've shared with you, this video and previous videos and even future ones. Until next time, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.